it's Thursday. So this week I'm gonna be showing you how to make Shelly the Triceratops. So before we get into this, I just needed to remind you that you need to go over to my communities tab and vote for the next Not My Idea pattern. I'm gonna to have to close that off by probably this time tomorrow. So if you haven't voted yet, get over there and have your say. As I'm recording this, I don't know what's actually in the vote, but what I will do is insert the current rankings here. Oh look, isn't it great that one of them is winning? Okay, let's get into it. Now remember if you enjoy this pattern that there are plenty of others like it on my channel at the moment. Just in this current dinosaur series for the last few weeks, we've got our Noso Nessie, who is a plesiosaur. We have Waffles the Ankylosaurus. We've got Puff the T-Rex. And we have Ribs the Pterodactyl circling above our heads. And we're adding Shelly the Triceratops to that today. All right, let's get into it. So today's special fancy stitch is the shell stitch and we'll be using it to make her frill. All right, so let's talk tools and materials. So for today's project, you're going to need eight ply, 100% acrylic in as many colors as you wish. I'm going to be using this coral color for the body and the frill. And I'm gonna be using a little white for her horns. You're going to need 15 millimeter safety eyes, your 3.5 millimeter hook, a pair of scissors, pins and needles, and some stuffing. But that's it. So for today's Triceratops, we're going to be making her all in one color, but we will be using the puff stitches for the horns. Now, if you want to see how I came to that decision, you should go back and watch my previous video where I went through my whole process in designing this little guy. So to start with, we're going to do the head, body and tail piece. And we do that by starting at the tip of the tail. Then we work up to the back of the head where we lay the foundation for the frill. And then we continue working to the front of the nose and we finish him off. And we just make that all as one piece. And that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so grab your main color and we're going to get started. Okay, so that's the end of row 24 there. And what we're going to do in the next row is lay the foundation of that frill. And we're going to do that using front post stitching. So first up, I'm going to put the eight single crochet in just to move where we're currently working. Just like that, and that should bring you around to the side of your dyno. You'll note that we have a flat side and we have a rounded side. So the round is the top, the flat is the bottom, and we should be sitting on the edge of that now. And so next up, we're going to put in 21 front post single crochet. So we work our front post by inserting our hook from the front of the piece around the post. So instead of working through the loops, which should be that way, we're going to work around the post, which is that way. And I'm going to work the next 21 stitches around the posts. Just like that. So now what I'm going to do is the same thing I do whenever I come out of doing post stitching. And that is I'm going to count backwards the number of stitches from my loop until I reach the total that's meant to be in the round. And then I'll know exactly what the next stitch is that I'm supposed to work in. I just, otherwise I tend to drop or find an extra stitch in this process. And this is just the foolproof way of making sure you end up with the right number of stitches. So that's 30 there. So that's that final single crochet in that round. Okay, so if we look at what that's actually doing, we'll see that we get two sets of loops that we could work in from doing stitching that way. So we have the external set of stitches, which is the ones we would normally be working into next. You can see that we've got sort of two, the two loops on top there. And then if we roll it to look at the inside of the piece, we have another two sets of loops from the previous row because we didn't work into them, we worked around the post instead. So what that's going to allow us to do is we're going to be working our next rounds around the inner set of loops, which are not the usual ones we'd work into after a front post row. Now we're going to continue working our face. We have another couple of rows before we pop our eyes in and you should have two completely free loops on the outside of your piece. And I'm going to show this whole row in long form, just me stitching 
just in case I'm not explaining myself very well. So the row starts with six single crochet. So the next stitch is a decrease three. It's the first one we've done in this pattern, but there are many more ahead of us. So a decrease three is when we decrease over three stitches. So I would normally do that with an invisible, but I'm gonna show you how to do it the long form way just to really explain what that stitch is. So I insert my hook into the first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Insert my hook into the second stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now the third stitch is going to be our first one of those inner loop stitches. So note that we've got external loops there and I'm just gonna move them out of the way and there are the inner loops that I'm working into. I'm just gonna insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. And I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all three and that's our decrease three. And I'm sorry that that fell over the first stitch just to like complicate things a little bit, but this is complicated knots. So if I wasn't making things unnecessarily difficult, you wouldn't know you were on my channel. Okay, so next up we're going to be doing five single crochet. So working into the inside loops. Note that the outside loops are there, the inside loops are here. Note that these stitches should be just as easy to work into as regular single crochet stitches. If you're having to force your hook through, something's gone wrong and you're not using the right loops. So that's my first five single crochet into those sort of inside loops. You'll note that because I've worked into them now, there's the, they're the ones that are pointing forwards. And we can see that front post detailing is standing out nicely along the side and we're getting that nice smooth line in. So I'm now just going to finish the round. So the next stitch is a decrease and five single crochet. Then a decrease and then four single crochet. And then a decrease three. So the first two of that last decrease three should be uh, the inner loop stitches. And then the last one, you might have to twist it around a little bit, will be that last single crochet we did in the previous round. And there we go, that's that round done. And that's roughly what it should look like. I'm just gonna take a moment to stuff, making sure I get stuffing all the way into the end of the tail. And you do wanna stuff quite firmly. Okay, so I've stuffed just up to this neck point. And now we're going to build up the face. Now in the next row, we are going to do some puff stitching to introduce the first two horns. If you don't enjoy doing puff stitches, you can skip them and just replace them with a single crochet. So instead of doing a puff stitch, do a single crochet and just work up some little sort of six single crochet around nubs and you can sew them on instead. But sewing on tiny pieces is just not what I envisioned for my envisioned. But sewing on tiny pieces is just not what I envisioned for my weekend and so I'm going to stitch mine in and I'm going to show you how to do it too. So we're going to start with 11 single crochet. So we've done 11 single crochet normally. Now in the next stitch, which is also a single crochet, I'm going to change to my horn color. Now this process will be very familiar to you if you've watched the T-Rex video from a couple of weeks ago. We're going to be basically doing the puff stitches here the exact same way. But I am gonna just run through it again for those of you who might've missed that one or skipped that one. First, I have to change color to my puff stitch color. So I've inserted my hook, I'm gonna yarn over and pull up a loop. So I've got two loops of my old color on my hook there. I'm then going to put that color to one side and lay my new color alongside it. So you'll note that I'm holding them alongside my hook there and I'm pinching them both at the base of that stitch. And then I'm then going to yarn over with my new color and pull it through both loops on that hook. I'm gonna tug both of those tails a little bit just to pull that stitch nice and tight. So there I now have my new color set up and just ready to work with straight away. And the next stitch we're going to do is a puff stitch. So just to run you through what that is as well, we're gonna yarn over our hook, insert our hook into the stitch where it's going, yarn over again and pull up a loop, leaving three loops on our hook. And then I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook and yarn over again, which should get us to five. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I have 11 loops on my hook.
There we go. So I should have 11 loops on my hook now. And I'm very sorry that that is white. There, let me go. Let me do that. So I should have 11 loops on my hook now. So now I'm going to actually change back to my original color by holding that white out of the way. And I didn't trim this color off before, so I'm just going to literally pull it forward. So you can see that a little bit on the inside. It's a little crossover happening. And I'm going to yarn over with my old color and pull it through all 11 loops. Just like that. And then I'm going to chain one to set that stitch in place. So that is our puff stitch. Now, when we go to work in the next round, you'll see that the puff stitch has created a set of white loops and a set of orange loops for me. I'm going to work in the orange loops only and skip any white loops. It keeps it nice and simple and stops us from gaining a stitch by accident. So with our first puff stitch done, I'm not trimming off my white because I'll pull it forward to do the next one because there's another one coming up. I'm going to put five single crochet in along the top of the head. And by that I mean I'm going to put four stitches in and then in that fifth one I'm going to change back to my white. So once again, two loops on my hook, pulling that white forward. It can be make as much of a mess as you like inside. So that's literally just going to be me pulling it across the inside of those stitches. I'm going to yarn over and pull it through the two loops on my hook to finish off that single crochet like so. So now I'm ready to work in my white again and I'm just going to work another puff stitch into the next stitch. Like so. So once again, 11 loops on my hook, pull the white out of the way, pull my main color back forward again, crossing them over behind, pinching them at the base of the stitch, yarn over and pull through all 11 loops and chain one to finish the stitch. And there is our second little horn. I'm now just going to work five single crochet to finish that round. There we go. So we're now going to work the next four rounds of stitches, which shouldn't contain anything too challenging in them, as long as you remember not to work into the white stitches. So at this point, we're going to stop and we're going to insert our eyes. So I'm just going to grab them from here. I'm just going to do a quick customizing job on these eyes because they are clear and I thought it might be fun. So I've got two little pieces of washi tape here and I've just used some standard gold. I'm going to fold them over so that they're not sticky and then I'm just going to give them a little snip in the middle. I'm going to take my eye and I'm going to insert it through that little snip. Then I am just going to trim the excess off. Now the reason I don't have to glue these in place or anything like that is because when I put the backs on the the, the same way that it holds the eye in place on the yarn is going to hold the little backing color in place as well. So the eyes are inserted three rows in front of this frill that we have here. So if I count one row of stitches, note that I'm not counting the row where the, the frill is actually attached. So one, two, and three, and it should leave me just in line with in front of that first horn. And I'm just going to plonk it into any one of those stitches in that row and repeat the same thing on the other side. So that's the row of stitches that the frill's attached into. And then we're going to go one, two, three, and the eye goes in here. It's always really hard when you make it tail first because then you are inserting eyes into a head that is not fully formed yet. Okay, so I've roughly positioned those on either side of the head and now I'm just checking from every angle that they are roughly even and these ones are. I kind of nailed it the first go but you can move them basically one stitch in any direction. So you do want them roughly centered just in front of these horns though. Anywho, now that I'm happy with the positioning of those, I'm going to snap the backs on. I don't know if you can hear that, but my neighbor is apparently fighting a kangaroo upstairs. Okay, so the backs are on and I am now going to finish stuffing the head. Just like that. And you might need to reset all the stems of your eyes so that they're not being pushed in any one direction. And note that my white is still attached from, from when I did the puffs as well. So now I'm going to work, we only have two rows left. So this first one requires seven single crochet around. And then we're going to do two decrease threes. Now that does mean that this row will overlap itself slightly. That final decrease three will overlap into the first stitch of the round. 
and it should leave us with eight stitches in the round in total. I'm sorry to have included that, but it honestly is the easiest way to get the right shape. So now we are working our final round and our final round will include a puff, but not right away. So first up, I'm going to do a decrease like that then two single crochet and then a decrease. The next stitch is a single crochet and I'll be changing to my horn color. So two loops on my hook, holding that color out of the way and pulling up the white, which I have just carried over from inside. I'm gonna yarn over and pull that through, tugging on my original color to tighten that stitch. And I'm going to work a puff stitch into the next stitch. I'm then going to change back to my original color and yarning over, pull it through all 11 loops on my hook. So I'm going to chain one to finish off the puff stitch and then I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch and just slip stitch in there and finish off. That is right, the very last stitch you do on this Triceratops is basically a puff stitch. And you can trim off your white as well. So the white I'm going to just tuck straight into that opening. Like that. And now with the tail of my body colour, I'm going to weave it through the remaining stitches. Including the orange part of that puff. And then pull tight to close. And tuck that away as well. And there is your first piece done. Now that is by far the most labour intensive piece. Now, just as a little reminder, I'm going to be working my frill all in one color because I liked the look of that better. But if you wanted to use a secondary color in yours, all you have to do is the second row of this frill in a different color. That's all. That's as easy as that is. So the stitch that we join our yarn in can be a little bit difficult to spot. So with my Triceratops facing me, I'm going to be attaching on the side of the frill on the right hand side. Now the first stitch that we work into can be pretty difficult to spot. So what I'm going to actually do is because it's easier to spot the point where we finished off on that little sort of ridge that we're working into, I'm going to count backwards from here, 21 stitches. So, so I can see that 21 is this sort of little crooked stitch off to the side, but I know that that is definitely the stitch I am joining in because we counted and the numbers don't lie. So I'm going to start by slip stitching to join my color. Like so. So this row we will be working shell stitches and they are a lot of fun. They're basically built up of little fans of double crochet. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to single crochet into the next stitch. Like that. I'm going to be skipping the next two stitches of the frill and we'll be working five double crochet into the, the third stitch from where we currently are. So skipping two and then working five double crochet into the next one. Now, for those of you who might need a refresher, double crochet is when we yarn over our hook, we insert our hook into the stitch we wanna work into, we yarn over and pull up another loop. So we have three on our hook, yarn over and pull through the first two, yarn over and pull through the second two, leaving us with a double crochet. And I'm going to work five in total into that stitch. That leaves you with this little fan shape. And what I'm going to do is skipping the next two along the frill, I'm going to single crochet into the next one. Just like that. So I'm going to repeat that twice more around the head. So just like that, now I am going to just slip stitch in that final stitch around just to anchor our frill. So that is our first round of the frill. Now, if you like just a tiny little, tiny little frill, you can leave it there as well. I liked something a little bit more grandiose. So I am going to add the next two rows, but honestly, this is one of those things where you can stop at any point and it'll still be cute. So I'm going to chain three. Now, if you're swapping to a secondary color, do it now. And we're basically gonna work a second row of shell stitch back along the top. So in order to do that, I'm going to first up, put two double crochet into the single crochet we did at the end of that row. So not the slip stitch into the single crochet like that. I am then going to 
count the double crochets in this fan and in the third one. So it should be the middle double crochet. I'm going to put a single crochet into that. So in that stitch there, work a little single crochet. I'm then presented with two double crochet to finish off that fan and then the single crochet that we did in between them. So I'm going to skip those two double crochet and I'm going to put five double crochet into the single crochet we put in between the shells of the previous round. Okay, I'm then going to skip the next two double crochet and single crochet into the third one from our hook. Now that one there should once again be the middle double crochet from the middle fan. So once again, I'm gonna skip the next two double crochet and we're gonna put five double crochet into the single crochet between the shells. And then single crochet into the middle double crochet of the last fan there like that. So it should be building up this little crest so now we skip two double crochet and in that final single crochet from the previous round, we are going to put three double crochet. So those are the two rounds of the shell stitch I did. And once again, you can sort of stop there if you, if you like the look of that sort of more minimalist crest. I, however, am going to be working some little scallops along the edge just to give it a little bit of extra frill. Uh, I do not know the name of that stitch and I actually find crochet stitches are really hard to look up the names of things. So I said this in the design video as well and I might already have an answer, but uh, if any of you know the name of the stitch I'm about to do, leave it in the comments below and please educate me. So I've chained one and I've turned and we're going to be working back along the top, working in every stitch now. So what I'm going to do is put four single crochet into one stitch and then a slip stitch into the next one. And I'm gonna repeat that along the whole edge of that crest. And then slip stitch into that final stitch and finish off. Leave a little bit of a tail just to help yourself with the next bit. So all finished off. So there is his final fantabulous crest. And note that it sort of slopes very nicely into the forehead and is nicely ridged against the back. So now you'll note that we have these tails to weave in. So this first one's easy because it's against the body. And if you've changed colors, you will have a few more than this as well. But that's okay, because I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with them. So what I'm going to do is the reason we left a longer tail is I'm going to just weave it down and along these stitches to disguise it. This works just as well for an alternate color as well. And then once it's back at the base, I'm just going to tuck it into the body and nobody will ever know it was there. Well, I mean, we both will, but it'll be our little secret, kind of like a pocket squirrel. And there is his crest. All right, so now we're gonna just pop that whole piece to one side and we're gonna start working on the legs. Okay, so next up we're going to make his little feet. Now, if you made Waffles Ankylosaurus a couple of weeks ago now, you will already be familiar with this pattern. It is pretty much exactly the same. So I'm gonna just grab my body color and I'm gonna construct them now. I'm gonna start with the front legs. So I finished that off and now I'm just gonna stuff basically the foot only and leave the leg empty. And you're going to need two of those. So pop them to one side and now we're going to make the back legs. So then we're just gonna finish that off once again, stuff just the foot portion of it, not the leg, and you're going to need two of those as well. Okay, so now we have all of our pieces. We're just going to assemble our little triceratops. Grabbing our body piece and our front legs first, I'm going to squish the opening in the same direction as the foot is pointing, and I'm going to pin that 
the body just behind the frill. So about a third of the way up of the total height. And we're going to just pin that in place. And we're going to do the same thing with the other front leg on the other side. There we go, just like that. So next up, I'm gonna grab the back legs and squishing the same way. So in the direction the foot is pointing, squish them flat. And I'm gonna pin them on in between the front leg and the tail. And repeating on the other side. So once you've got all four legs pinned on, you need to stand your triceratops up and make sure that all four feet touch the ground. If one of yours is higher than the others, you need to move it down slightly. If it's lower than the others, you need to move it up slightly, but your triceratops should be stable and not rock around. Mine is good, so what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna just sew all four of those legs on. Ooh, so here's something. I have only been yarn shopping once this year. After I did that sorting out my stash video in November last year, I'll link to it somewhere if, uh, <laughs> if any of you haven't seen it. But after I did that video last year and I came up with what, 340 something balls of yarn, I was like, okay, I have a problem. <laughs> so I stopped yarn shopping this year. I promised myself that I would just work through what I already had. And so far I have, I mean, admittedly, I did, I did do a quick top up for like whites and blacks and a few blues. But other than that, I haven't really run out of anything yet. And Honestly, I don't know how many balls I have left. Don't get me wrong, I'm still filling up like a good eight of those cube containers. Easily. <laughs> but uh, I should really do a recount of all of those and um, update. And just it'd be really interesting to see how much yarn I'd used in, in that time period. Because I reckon I've gone through quite a bit. Don't get me wrong, none of my creations tend to use like a lot of any given color. But then I've got kind of volume on my side because I, I mean, maybe not since that video, but in the last 12 months, I've made at least a hundred, a hundred little dudes because for each, for each video that I do, I make one when I'm making the pattern and I tend to make that one there out of whatever color I have a lot of, which is why you see a lot in this color and why you're going to see a lot in pink because I've inherited just a lot of baby pink and I've also I just had a lot of that that green color left over from when I was making a blanket for someone for their wedding one and only blanket I may ever make FYI <laughs> uh, yeah so so I make one in like whatever color I have a lot of and then if I need to kind of like with the triceratops this time around where I've my little purple dude. Um, if I need to make another one, I'll try and make it in a different color. Just, you know, then I have a photo opportunity and it's nice to have a little bit of variation. And then I've got like the one made in my final color, which is like this coral one this time, which is, this, I only have one ball of this particular coral color. And so once I run out, that's it until I go shopping again. And I don't want to go shopping for more yarn until so I've used a little bit more of it up. I haven't run out of any one color group yet, though I am starting to run low on uh, like nice greens. I've got lots of like very Christmassy green and uh, lots of very, very shiny, shiny, cheap acrylic, which like doesn't show up very nicely on camera, but does make for does make for lovely toys in, and, and things in person, but photographs horrendously. And so I try not to use it for these videos or for my patterns where I do take a lot of photos of them. So uh, I've lost track of my original point, but I believe I was just uh, sharing the personal victory of having only spent about 50 bucks on yarn and it's July. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. I don't know, how often do you guys all go yarn shopping? I, I'll admit that like, there are a few things as lovely in life as a beautifully stocked yarn store. Just the shelves. Shelves of just lovely, fuzzy, fluffy goodness. Still haven't resolved uh, how to store my creations, but since I moved my filming setup, hope you like it by the way. Uh, since I, I'm, I'm now in the corner of our living room. Um, and since, yeah, since I moved out here, 
I've claimed this set of shelves behind me in its entirety, so uh, that's given me a few more shelves to display things on, which, I mean, you'll, you'll see behind me in the intro and conclusion of this video. And uh, so that's it's kind of bought me a little time, but uh, still ruminating on ideas on what to do with all of them, because I mean, I'm, I'm, I have no plans to stop in the near future, and if I keep making, well, it's, it's been three per week for the last two weeks, but so if I keep making, if I keep making two things every single week, I'm, st I'm, I'm, I am eventually going to have to do something about it. So uh, a couple of you recommended like a toy sling or a toy hammock. Um, that, that, so that's a cool kind of idea. I've not explored that one there before. I am worried about how much dust would 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 gather in something like that. To me, that's yeah. I mean, the shelves get really dusty. I feel like a toy hammock is just like just as much dust, but I'd be more hesitant to touch it because it'd all be like balanced. And then there's like plastic containers. Anyway, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about this again. Um, <laughs> I talked about this a lot. I think it was. I think it was with with waffles. Was it waffles that I talked about this a lot with? Might have been the T-Rex. Anyway, with one of the other dinosaurs, I already sort of chatted about this a little bit, but I'm still trying to resolve that. No real update there. And there is your finished Triceratops. Okay, so that's it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. A written version of this pattern will be sent out to my patrons and will be available in my store. A link to both will be in the description down below. So don't forget to go vote for the next Not My Idea video, which will be up next week if all goes to plan. Other than that, like if you liked it, comment if you've got something to say, subscribe, and I will see you next week. Okay, bye! Hello. <laughs> it's, it's nice to meet you.